when halfway through grad school, my sister passed away, my world was turned upside down. And I honestly didn't think I'd get through anything, let alone finishing grad school. And then I realized all of the questions that I'd been asking myself about identity and the thing that I thought I was going to study and explore and then examine for a thesis, um, looking at how the queer and LGBT community impacted my identity. And it became very clear that the focus would be on how my relationship with my sister impacted my identity and how she was actually the first person to recognize and vocalize okay. my being gay. Do what, Cherie? My boys. They're cute. And we both love Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Matthew reacts as if for the first time in his life, someone sees him as he is, without judgment. So that led to... You're the one who always pauses dirty dancing when he's getting out of bed naked. For living their lives while condemning me! Looking back at our, our childhood and, and examining all of the times where I had an opportunity to live authentically but I chose not to and how she kind of conspired with me to keep this secret for a really long time. I won't tell anyone, ever. Sorry, I told you to fuck off. I know. I love you too. My grandmother, I think, recognized it even before my sister did, except that my sister was the one that articulated it out loud. My grandmother made sure that I was nurtured and fostered it in bringing me to the library. Our grandma was constantly reminding us that we needed to get along. Blood was thicker than water. That one day, we would only have each other. That nice. And making sure that I saw, like, public performances and public spaces or so that I could see that there were other people like me um, but without acknowledging it vocally. The bigger my ego or personality or passion for this art and this industry grew, the more it shrank in my sister. And that was a big part of looking at this uh, through the lens of my sister's eyes and seeing how because if I'm gonna look at how my relationship, how our relationship, how she impacted me, I have to look at how I impacted her. And so then, and that's a huge part of this play was me imagining her response to something that either it was born out of a conversation that did happen in our past or that I wanted it to happen, but she always shut it down for whatever reason. I got to kind of suppose her reasoning. And in doing that, I got to see how often I probably subconsciously bullied her into not following her dream of dancing or performing. Sheree didn't want this as much as I wanted it. So then Sheree started wanting this for me. And in our adult life, that became our relationship is that my sister was a, took over being my number one champion from my grandmother when she passed away. And so my sister then was a huge advocate for my continuation and my success and at the same time she wanted me to be home home being back in Colorado where she had moved back to um, because I think she knew her time on earth was limited and also she wanted me close to her daughter my beautiful niece what has surprised you the most about directing the piece Well, when I wrote it, it was cathartic. I, I, it was painful. I was cr I cried a lot, and I was reading a lot on sibling loss. There isn't a lot out there. I, uh, I learned that was the first thing I learned when I lost my sister is that there's a lot of uh, work out there and help out there for parents who have lost children and children who have lost parents. Uh, but there aren't a lot of books out there for siblings who have lost a sibling. Uh, so. I, the writing process, it was hard, and I, but I, I anticipated it. I love directing, I love choreographing, I love being in a theater, I love working with actors, so what I was not anticipating, and the hardest part of this process, was watching actors who I respect and who are, I'm close with, you know, one of them is my partner, watching them bring to life my story and my, my sister, and 
I have to re-witness every mistake that I made <laughs> in my life. Watching it unfold on stage, that was hard. And it, emotionally, I wasn't prepared for it as a director. And there were moments when I couldn't, I wanted the scene to go a different way, but it wasn't fair of me to ask the actors because it's in the text and they're reading it the way that it's written and they're interpreting it the way that they interpret it. And so that was kind of hard because I'm like, well, that's where I got it wrong. See, I didn't see from my sister's point of view, but I get to see it through the actors. So I think I did a good job with my writing, but it's frustrating as a director because I want to change it and I really can't, unless I want to change my writing and I don't. This notebook was the last thing Grandma wrote in. This wrapping paper that came from the first gift I gave to her. Sheree begins frantically walking through the house, collecting trinkets and mementos from every corner of the overstuffed room. Mounds of notebook, boxes and stickers. That's a big challenge. Yeah. What's been the most joyful thing about directing it? Watching these actors who I respect bring me and my sister and our story to life. Uh, yeah, it's... I will never get to see her on this earth again, other than in a recording or I hear her voice, you know, on a voice message that I've saved. But this is the closest to working through. I can't, I don't want to. These are my things, my memories. All of the things that we didn't get to resolve. And of course, there are so many unresolved things. This is not a catch-all and it didn't fix or change certain things, but I felt joy in getting to have some closure in a way that I think my sister would be proud because she knew how much I loved doing what I do. Without further ado, I present The Great Escape! I think every writer hopes that their work lives on beyond them and their circle of community. I use the word community because I hope that what this play will do is be of service to the people that are grieving and communities at large that are grieving, you know? Grief is different every day and it's different for every person as far as I can tell and from every conversation that I've had with professionals and friends and family and actors and uh, professors and everyone has a different way of working through their grief and their loss. But what I think that I've done with this play is I've touched on moments in one's life that are universal and explored them in a way that we don't look at until we've lost someone. Just two more reps. This is how you get your life back. And we don't have these conversations in society, or at least not in American culture. We don't have conversations, I'm paraphrasing, but there's a version of what she says in the play, uh, reminding me and my sister that one day we will be the only people that are like witness to the life that we've led. And that moment in the play always strikes me because my sister is gone. What did we do? That witness that, that would testify to my life. She knows where the skeletons are buried. She's gone. And so I was not prepared for that. And I don't think anyone's prepared for that. Whether you lose someone at eight years old or 48 years old or beyond, it doesn't matter. And so what I think that the play, what I hope that the play does is it reminds everyone that we all go through this rite of passage of loving someone and losing them and how it impacts us forever forward and what we will do with that because what I hope to do is to honor my sister and continue creating work that inspires and challenges and motivates and is from a positive place because that's who my sister was. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. I can see clearly now the rain is gone.